Hi, hello, and welcome to Rebel Unicorn Crafts. Today I want to talk about monochromatic paintings. Recently I showed you guys how to paint monochromatic mountains using any color, and you guys seemed to like it, so I thought we could actually explore a little bit more about monochromatic paintings together. Before we dive into monochromatic paintings, we actually want to take one step backwards and discuss one term about color. That is hue. Now a hue is the pure color, whether that's a phthalo blue, ultramarine, any sort of yellow, vermilion, that type of thing. It's the base color, it's the base pigment that you're going to be using. You can do a ton of different things with that, including mix it with other colors, but not for monochromatic. For monochromatic, what we actually want to work with are shades and tints. A shade is the range of colors within that first hue that you can achieve by adding more and more black. Adding a little black at a time will slowly dull the color and make it darker and darker until you reach more of a true black color. A tint, however, is when you add white to a color. Now this is one thing I want to take a second to talk about because in watercolor it's going to be different than other types of painting. In watercolor, we're not going to necessarily add white. You can add white, but you don't need to because the paper and the water will serve as the white. So in order to get a lighter and lighter tint to it, you're just going to add more water and let more of that paper show through. With something like acrylic, you're going to need to actually mix in some physical white to it. You can also explore something like tone, which means to add gray to it. It's going to have a slightly different effect than either just the pure tint or the pure hue on its own. You can achieve different tones with watercolor by either mixing in some white gouache with some black or by doing what we did before, we are just going to lighten the shade portion of this and that will give you the tones within that huge range. Ultimately, all of that can actually be boiled down to its value, which is the darkness or lightness of a specific color. And value is what monochromatic paintings thrive on. Having high contrast within one color is what's going to allow a monochromatic painting to actually work. If we placed two of the same shades of a color next to each other, you can't differentiate the shapes and things like that. However, if I put a color that is a light tint next to one or on top of one that is a darker shade, you can really see the difference. Some monochromatic paintings that you'll see are actually closer to what might be described as an analogous color scheme. An analogous color painting is where you take colors that are all very similar, so they can kind of be described as monochromatic, but instead they do spring out around the color wheel. So if you used a base phthalo blue hue, maybe some of them have more green, maybe some of them are more towards the blue or purple end, where they all are bluish, but not quite the true hue blue. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you three super simple paintings that you can do with monochromatic color schemes. But I also want to show you that this doesn't need to stop there. You can really paint anything in a monochromatic color scheme. If you started your art journey like I did using charcoal and graphite, you would have been more comfortable, like I was, with all the values that gray and black can have. As a matter of fact, when I wanted to start painting, I still didn't quite understand color. Something about color just kind of really intimidated me, and this is one of the very first paintings I ever did. A monochromatic painting of all the different Star Trek captains. The key to this was for me to choose reference photos that had really high contrast so that I could get all those features in there without having to have any color. In my own artwork, another example that kind of fits into this monochromatic painting idea is this painting I did of my dog Moogie. She's a black dog and one of the things I love is that sometimes in the light her fur kind of shines almost blue so I wanted to do something that really showcased the blue colors that was kind of done in a monochromatic slash split complementary color scheme because I did a lot of high contrast values in this if I take all those yellows and oranges away we're left with a monochromatic painting that still has a lot of depth because of all the different values within it so you can really paint anything that you want to with a monochromatic color scheme as long as you really play with those values and really try to build high amounts of contrast between the lightest and darkest points in the painting if you're watching this video you're likely at the beginning of your art journey, so monochromatic paintings might make a lot of sense to you, or they might not make any sense because you're overwhelmed by all of the possibilities. With that in mind, I'm going to show you three super simple paintings that pretty much anybody can do where you can take advantage of the monochromatic color scheme. The first of which is going to be an acrylic painting. I'm loosely basing it off of this painting I did a little bit ago on TikTok, where I did use a lot of really bright colors, but we can do the same principles within one color. I'm going to start by mixing up kind of a gray light blue color and I'm going to make some strokes on the outsides of this painting to represent the leaves. 
I will let that dry and then I want to go more into that pure hue of that blue color and I'm going to grab that and then I'm going to just kind of take a different size brush and wiggle around in a circle to make these petal shapes. You can see here we're already building up a lot of contrast from the background to the actual flower itself. And then in the center, I'm going to put some blackish dots. They're really dark blue, blackish color, and I'm just going to put those in there. Now that doesn't have a ton of contrast, so we need to bump up the contrast within that so that we get some interest. So I'm going to take a really, really light blue, just a teeny amount of that phthalo blue into some pure white color, and I'm going to kind of outline those center bits, some of the circles, just to really get them to pop, make that inner part of the flower really pop out. Then I'm also going to outline all the petals of that flower, give some of them a little loop over, and then I might even throw in a few outlines of the leaves on the exterior part. Yes, this does look a lot different. However, it has a very similar feeling and something about the monochromatic color palette really is very calming. So this might be a good option if you're an acrylic painter and you want to dabble in monochrome. Next up, let's switch over to watercolor. And for this one, let's just do something abstracted. Abstracts are always a nice, safe place to play with new ideas and new theories that you have not yet explored in art. For this, I'm going to do kind of an intentionally messy stripe with a different texture on each stripe and a different quote unquote color. It's all within that same hue, a phthalo blue, but in some I'm going to water it down more so it's lighter. In some I'm gonna add more black and make it darker. And I'm also going to leave a lot of negative space. So a lot of the white is going to show through so that we can really have these details pop out. In these types of simple abstract paintings, if you lean into a little bit of the messy style, it starts to look a little more intentional. So if you're struggling with some brush control, it's really good to kind of just lean into that and make it part of the painting rather than getting frustrated by yourself when you cannot make a perfectly straight line. Alternately, if you really want to make perfectly straight lines, you could use something like thin washi tape in between each of these to make sure you get nice crisp lines. And finally, we're going to do a variation on the mountain scene that I showed in the short just to give you another option with this and also to talk you through it in a little slower format. For this, I'm going to start by taping off the edges because I like the nice crisp border that that creates within my sketchbook. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. Then I'm going to take some of the pure blue hue, put a little bit of water in my brush and just kind of get a nice saturation, make a stroke across, and then I will slowly dip into more and more water to go down the page. It doesn't need to be perfect because the sky can look a little hazy, but we're getting a bit of a gradient where we're going from a darker color, the more pure color, into a lighter tint. Then for the mountains, I'm going to take a similar color to what I started with at the top of the mountains with a little more water and a little bit of the black color to make them a little bit more of a muted gray color. And I'm going to make the top part of the mountain, wash my brush, and then I'm going to just soften down into the side so that the whole bottom of the page is going to be filled with a really light wash of whatever color was at the top of those mountains. If you're brand new to watercolor, this is a great exercise because it's also going to teach you about layering and needing to let things dry. So between every single layer, you wanna make sure it gets nice and dry. You can either wait or you can use something like a hair dryer in order to actually force it to dry. I'm gonna repeat the same step for the mountains two more times, but each time I'm going to make that color just a little bit darker, a little bit more gray by adding a little bit more of that black into it. And then I'm just going to make that stroke across at the top. And then again, I'm going to wash my brush and soften those lines all the way down and over to the side because I've got plans for something to put on the right side and I don't want much of those mountains to show through. Again, we're drying between every single layer so that we have a nice crisp layer on top of each other. And by actually placing even similar colors on top of them, we're going to be changing the different values of that hue by making that hue a little darker with every single layer you put on top. Then in the bottom right corner, I'm going to really play with contrast here. So we've got a nice light sky, we've got a nice light set of mountains, and I'm going to mix up a super dark blue and black mixture in order to make some trees in the foreground. And by making them much darker than the things in the background, it's going to really push the other things further away and create enough contrast where it has a lot of interest. For my best advice for painting the trees is to not overthink them. They really are just a line 
a few dabs at the top of the tree, and then squiggles downwards that get fuller and wider as you go further down. The more you overthink this, the more kind of regular it's going to look, and oftentimes the charm isn't looking a little more natural. You could leave it here, you could add more trees, whatever you want, or if you want one extra detail, you can take a little blue color, make it a little bit lighter, and then you can add a few little M's or W's into the sky to show some soaring birds. Those are just a few examples of what you can paint with a monochromatic color scheme. You can actually paint anything that has high enough contrast in it with a monochromatic color scheme and it'll be absolutely beautiful. If you try any of these paintings, let me know in the comments, or if you've painted anything in a monochromatic style, let me know about that in the comments below too. I hope that you have a magically creative day.